What's up world? This is Sophisticated Investing Life and today we're going to talk about why hedge funds do not like Uber, why they don't like it, and why Jeremy from the Financial Education Channel loves the stock. So what's the difference between the two? So a few days ago, Jeremy from Financial Education Channel, really good investor, um, truly contrarian, um, and started out around the time I started out at the very beginning, but he was consistent and I wasn't. That's not the point. The point is, um, he made a video about Uber. He's made a number of videos about Uber before, but he recently had a video where he said he bought over $23,000 worth of Uber stock. He bought it and added it to multiple accounts. Um, so this is coming off the heels of literally one week earlier, I had a hedge fund manager come into uh, my place of work um, and I interview hedge fund managers all the time. He pitched to me a, sh a reason to short Uber stock. So. You know, one compared to two, um, watch Jeremy's videos and I can see why he likes Uber so much. So like I mentioned before, Jeremy from the Financial Education Channel is a big contrarian investor. He's looking for stocks that's been hit, maybe some controversy, maybe there's some negative sentiment around the stock. But at the same time, he likes stocks that have really big growth prospects and he sees the growth prospects um, for Uber. I actually made a video about the different investor types, um, contrarian and growth being one, and there's two other ones. So if you haven't seen that video yet, check it out in the card and make sure to give it a watch. You'll understand the, the point of view I'm coming from and then come back to this. So let's review why Jeremy loves Uber. Now, first, he believes the negativity surrounding the stock about the profitability prospects for Uber is overblown. Um, he believes what the CEO uh, has said during conference calls, which is Uber will become profitable during the year 2021. And Jeremy specifically believes that the profitability will come from incremental hikes in rates, um, both for the ride sharing business as well as from Uber Eats. Um, just increasing it just a little bit. And it, it doesn't take that much. And it's not hard to conceive that actually happening. Um, also, speaking of the CEO, the CEO just bought millions of dollars worth of stock. And it is true that if the CEO is going in and buying stock in the open market, the CEO does not have to do that. But if he's doing that, it's a big deal. And he's showing a sign of confidence. And Jeremy likes that. Um, Uber also has some interesting business lines that are starting to play a role that's going to start growing more and more They're, they offer interesting growth prospects to the future so that includes uber freight which is um disrupting the freight logistics business um the bikes and scooters you know for that last mile service you don't want to take an uber to go you know a couple of blocks but you don't want to walk either you know the bikes and scooters can fill that void um and other major investments that are coming they're already happening now for um, self-driving cars but also for aerial ride share so that's the latest thing uber's working on um so big things happening big things happening also uber has ownership stakes and other ride sharing behemoths across the globe um so that's dd in china that's grab in southeast asia and i think it's dnx i think that's how you pronounce it in russia anyway these are the major um players in different parts of the world and uber has major like huge chunks of ownership right so if those companies continue to grow in valuation uber benefits from it lastly jeremy has recently seen this type of negative sentiment for stocks that he believe have great growth prospects in the future um recently as early as this year um, he brought up both facebook and tesla and he's like look i've seen this before i've seen this type of idea and i think this is a similar setup where i'm going to cash in because of these point these points, Jeremy bought stock plans. Well, he, he bought the stock and he plans on holding it for a very long time. Now, let's look at the other side of what this hedge fund manager pitched to me on why you should instead short Uber. First off, this hedge fund manager believes that the negative sentiment around Uber's profitability prospects is justified. Keep in mind that the CEO said that the company is going to be profitable on an EBITDA basis, not a net income basis. So that is just operating income. Plus you add back on um, depreciation and amortization. It's a accounting non-cash expense. It's not a real expense. So I get that. But at the same time, you're still, that's not, you're not even achieving that right now. So 
you're still negatively profit i mean there's negative profitability there and who knows when real profit is going to come actually come down to net income um, additionally even when adding back um, depreciation and amortization and those expenses are tied to reinvestments if major reinvestments are happening for both the aerial service as well as the self-driving car service that's going to increase your depreciation and amortization expense it's just going to make it harder to prove that you're profitable it's just going to be harder to prove that you're profitable you're an actual profitable business and you can self-sustain and because of that this company will continue to go back to the capital markets It's either going to dilute shareholders further by continuing to ask for more stock or it's going to add debt and which is going to increase interest payments which means it's going to make it even tougher to become profitable next uber's multiple business lines all the different things that they're doing they all face competition like real competition and none of the competition is profitable right and pop competition is popping up every day so like jeremy mentioned he mentioned in the video that things are kind of cutthroat in terms of competition for from ride sharing at this moment primarily with lyft but in every market they're in there is a competitor which is why they had to exit some markets it's the why they had to exit china why they had to exit southeast asia why because they had a competitor and that competitor was ha as big or had as deep of pockets and they ran them off they made an agreement so unless uber's trying to do that in the u.s and other markets you know we're gonna have a little bit of an issue and who knows they're ever going to truly be profitable because you can easily jump from uber to lyft even as a driver or a rider depending on the rates now other things all the other business lines they got real competition uber eats in particular i mean people see that as a growth driver but you got competition from grubhub and postmates and DoorDash, like that's some real competition. And there's also competition abroad, wherever they're at. Um, you got Uber Freight. Freight, it, it seems like something that Uber is gonna be ahead of the curve on everybody, but there's a startup named Convoy. Convoy is getting a lot of money, has a lot of backers. Those backers include Jeff Bezos and other CEOs from big companies like Starbucks, Expedia, and Salesforce. Now, that company has a lot of money behind it and expected to make major jumps in that same industry. And then you also have bikes and scooters. Well, the scooters, they compete with Lyman and, and Bird. They're a big thing here in Austin, Texas. They're big in other major cities, just like Uber's trying to break into. And don't forget, there's an electric scooter called Ojo that's in that's in the space. It's moving too. You know, it's the same last mile service. And self-driving cars, you know, they're putting a lot of money there. You're competing against Google and Tesla. Both have deeper pockets than Uber. So eventually i mean what i'm really trying to say is and what the hedge fund manager was saying was all of uber's business lines they all had no barriers of entry and low switching costs that is not a true competitive advantage you know you can use like i mentioned before you can jump from one to the other doesn't really matter so it's hard to incrementally increase any rates because you can easily jump i mean unless you're just not paying attention and you have a preference and i don't think there's a preference for uber or lyft or uber or doordash for example right lastly jeremy mentioned that he's seen this story before with tesla and facebook but the difference is that those two companies had real competitive advantage facebook is in a winner take most industry uh, with both facebook and instagram major players in the online advertising space and their network effect actually translate to pricing power like increasing facebook and instagram ads little by little over time that's what's been happening and is going to continue to happen because they actually have the network effect to do it and tesla tesla has actually shown signs of being profitable believe it or not they've actually shown signs of profitability um at least on a net income basis not just ebitda but actually net income um tesla also offers a very differentiated product with their cars and has a very loyal fan base Hell, I'm loyal to the to Tesla. I haven't even bought a Tesla yet. That's in the future. But it's the thing. That's the thing with Tesla. You know, you you get riled up about it. Um, and Uber's network effect isn't truly scalable because every city is different. Every market is different. So it's it's a tough. It's it's not as effective as Facebook's network effect. And Uber's services aren't really that differentiated from competition like Tesla. And there you have it. The argument both for and against Uber. So as you can probably tell, 
I'm leaning more with the hedge fund manager here in that I am not buying what Jeremy is selling. However, both myself and the hedge fund manager could be completely wrong. Could be completely wrong and Jeremy could en end up winning out in the end. Um, you have to remember one huge difference between myself and Jeremy is that Jeremy starts with a contrarian approach as a contrarian investor and he ends with growth. I start with a quality um, approach and then end with growth. So, you know, the growth aspect is still there, but we, the beginning, the primary like investor type is different. Um, one actually interesting point is that both quality and contrarian are both different ways that Warren Buffett invest. Um, and he's, you know, he's the most successful investor of all time and the wealthiest. And speaking of the wealthiest investor of all time, would you like to learn a little bit more about how Buffett actually built that wealth, um, his secrets to investing that the media usually doesn't talk about and how you can take those secrets and move to a six or even seven figure account in a shorter amount of time than you might expect. If you do, then download my free PDF on the top three secrets behind why Warren Buffett is the wealthiest investor of all time. So check that out in the description below and make sure to download it. So which side are you leaning on in the Uber debate? Are you leaning on Jeremy's or are you leaning on the hedge fund managers? Make sure to let me know in the comment section below. So that's all I have for you all today. Until the next time, thanks for watching and stay sophisticated.